In this slideshow, we will cover the development and evolution of American political parties. Parties can be described as the Constitution's unwanted offspring. We'll cover how parties first formed and how they have evolved over time. In the next slideshow, we'll cover the revival of parties. Most winning and losing presidential candidates vow to work with the opposing party. They claim to be uniters instead of dividers. They claim that they can reach their goals with the other party and bring Americans together. Leaders try to distance themselves from partisan bickering. They try to act like they are above politics, even as politicians. Most Americans say they vote for candidates and not parties. Although most don't like gridlock and partisan bickering, most Americans also prefer divided government. They are skeptical of government being in the hands of a single party. Despite all of this, most Americans identify themselves with one of the two major parties, and they consistently vote for their party's candidate. Political parties do exist for a reason. They make collective action possible. They solve collective action problems by making large-scale democracy possible. By definition, political parties are a body of people united for promoting, by their joint endeavors, the national interest upon some particular principle in which they all agree. Political parties are, in a way, the Constitution's unwanted offspring. There is no mention in the Constitution of the role of political parties. There is no mention of political parties at all. The founders were mostly skeptical of parties. Most believed that representatives should work to represent their constituents and organized opposition was frowned upon. As you may remember from earlier presentations, James Madison warned about the power of factions, which would include political parties. The first political parties were actually meant to be temporary, but this did not turn out to be the case. There are several incentives for party building. Parties grew out of efforts of political entrepreneurs to build alliances to coordinate the collective activity necessary to gain control and to use the machinery of government. Parties are a good way to build stable legislative and electoral alliances. These alliances help control legislation consistently. The members of coalitions cooperate even though they have different reasons for doing so. In order to reach goals, they need, to help, they need help from like-minded individuals. Parties are also good for mobilizing voters. As the electorate has grown larger, there is more reliance on parties to organize and mobilize citizens. Parties help develop new electoral techniques. They use mass communications to mobilize voters and to try and overcome the free rider problem. Finally, parties enforce collective responsibility. The individuals in the party have an incentive to protect the reputation of the party brand, so they work together. The picture on this slide is of Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who was the chair of the Democratic National Committee. Americans think of the two-party system as normal, but most democracies have more than two parties. Though not a perfect explanation of the two-party system, it is mostly a product of our electoral system. According to Duverger's law, single-member districts and winner-take-all elections, where the winner is chosen by a plurality, creates a two-party system. Knowing that there is no incentive for coming in second, people vote strategically and sometimes for what they would call the lesser of two evils. Other electoral systems, like proportional representation, incentivizes multiple parties. Under a proportional electoral system, seats are awarded based 
on proportion of the vote received and not based on individual districts. If the Green Party earns 10% of the votes, they get 10% of the seats in government. Some features of the two-party system include decentralized, fragmented party coalitions. It takes skillful management to maintain party unity with only two parties. Our system consists of professional politicians with professional staff workers and many volunteer activists. Figure 12-1 shows how the type of electoral system determines the number of parties. As you can see, majoritarian systems, like the United States, have fewer parties than proportional systems, like Norway, Denmark, Belgium, and many others. Political parties did not form immediately after the founding, but within a few congress congresses, there were the Federalists, who wanted a strong national government, and the Democratic Republicans, who were made up of the Anti-Federalists. After many defeats in the national government, the Democratic Republicans turned their focus to state-level politics to get the electors necessary to support Thomas Jefferson for president. With their pro-British leanings on the wrong side of the War of 1812, the Federalists eventually faded as a national force. Following the downfall of the Federalists, there was hope that parties would simply disappear, but this did not happen. The second party system was an era of organizational innovation. Following the demise of the Federalist Party, there was a short period of one-party rule. In 1824, all five candidates for president were from the Democratic-Republican Party. Andrew Jackson won a plurality of the vote and the Electoral College, but the House of Representatives awarded the presidency to John Q. Adams. The rule of one party created no incentive to maintain unity and the supporters of Andrew Jackson broke off to form their own party, the Democratic Party. In 1832, the first national party convention was held. Conventions are gatherings to convince a diverse party to agree and unite behind a single presidential ticket. They they used to be more contentious. Present-day conventions are mostly television spectacles since nominees are chosen through prim the primary election process. This era also saw the rise of the spoils system, where those who worked to elect the winner get government jobs or contracts to supply goods and services. The third party system was an era of entrepreneur, entrepreneurial politics. The Republican Party organized in 1854 as a coalition of anti-slavery forces. They were not a single issue party though. They had positions on other issues. In only the second try, they elected a president, Abraham Lincoln. This era saw the rise of party machines, which were built on the simple principle of exchange. Party politicians provided favors and services to people throughout the year in return for votes on election day. This party system also included the Progressive Era. During the Progressive Era, reformers that pushed for political reforms to prevent corruption. Reformers pushed political form reforms to prevent corruption. This included civil service, Australian ballot, primary elections, and direct democracy. The Australian ballot implemented elections where ballots were prepared by the government and listed candidates from all parties. The citizens voted in the privacy of a voting booth. Prior to implementing the Australian ballot, parties handed out ballots with their candidate with only their candidates listed on them. 
the progressive era shifted the focus from parties to candidates. The reforms weakened the spoil system and the party machine. The fourth party system saw the rise of the Republican Party. In 1896, the Democratic Party adopted an agrarian platform against the gold standard, while the Republican Party courted urban voters by convincing them that the gold standard was best for their economic well-being. The Republican Party then ascended to power until the Great Depression. The Great Depression created the fifth party system in the United States. This party system saw the rise of the New Deal Coalition. The New Deal Coalition brought together Democrats of different backgrounds, white Southern segregationists, Northern African Americans, progressive intellectuals, union members, poor farmers, Roman Catholics, and Southern Baptists. The Great Depression hurt Republicans and many were attracted to Roosevelt's New Deal programs. The New Deal coalition was difficult to maintain and eventually broke apart during the Civil Rights Movement in Vietnam. During this party system, primary elections and caucuses were implemented. States chose candidates through a vote, and delegates cast a vote at the convention based on those votes. Conventions evolved into events about solidarity and image building. That concludes this presentation on the development and evolution of American political parties. Be sure to check out the slideshow on the revival of political parties.